It's funny to twice a year I come here to Monterey to to make this presentation to Ellie's class. And it's very funny how do I have to update the numbers, Ellie. <laughs> so a night before I pick up my notebook and I open the last presentation and I need to update the numbers. So uh, uh, now we are with 35 million uh, uh, active users and, and the company is growing like crazy. And it's very funny to remember our story in all of our presentations, uh, how I, I was provoking the audience and most of my predictions uh, uh, realized that uh, we, we succeed in most of our predictions so uh, I hope that most of the things that I'll tell, tell you guys today in one year will become true and we will keep growing. Uh, so and thanks Ellie for, for the kindly words. Uh, I. Uh, we have some experience in, in raising money and venture capital, but I'll try to give you an overview about the company and I'll try to do this very qu quickly telling our story and part of the, the, the things that I'll tell here is very focused in, in, in our story in raising money and, and growing the company and, and then at, at the end you can ask me about your doubts about raising money in Brazil or raising money in Silicon Valley. We had great stories. And, and, and challenges uh, on this process. So an overview about the company. So we, we have offices in all that little white balls. Uh, I'm in charge of the operations in, in Silicon Valley and, and this is the, the office here is the base of our global expansion. Um, we started in Brazil and, and we have a very aggressive vision. So. We, we will be the, the world best and largest mobile service company. Super ambitious. And, and I think this is part of the, the, our success story. So we are super aggressive and super ambitious. Uh, we are the number one mobile company in, in Latin America. Uh, we are not a carrier, but we use carriers in Latin America to deliver content to end users and charge users for this content. Uh, we also use Google and Apple platforms on smartphones and tablets to, to deliver content and sell content um, to, to end users. Uh, we are leaders on the feature phone market in, in Latin America and we are growing very fast in smartphones. I'll tell you some stories to show you how fast we are growing on, feature, on smartphones. Uh, this was one number that I had to update, was 300 less in the last six months and we grew to 600 people, growing like crazy. Uh, we grew 70% uh, uh, a year in the last three years uh, and since we, we, we closed the Series B with Naspers, this happened in 2007, we grew 100 times. So it's probably we are the fastest growing company in Latin America, or the company that succeed, uh, most succeed in, in Latin America. Uh, we are very profitable, so we have cash calls that funds the innovation in the company and the global expansion. And we are ready to scale, I'll show you what we are doing. So most of these assets, and especially we consider that we are very profitable and, and scalable. It's super important to raise money. So different than Silicon Valley, where if you have a great idea and a, a good prototype and you are attacking a huge market, we think that a profitable company is the best, the best uh, format to raise money. Uh, and in Latin America, we don't have the amount of capital that companies here in Silicon Valley or, or in the US uh, find. So we had to learn to be profitable, to pay our bills since the D zero, the day zero. So this is one very interesting characteristic of, of our company. We always, we always, uh, um, made money since the, 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 the first day. Why? Because capital 15 years ago when we started was not available in the Brazilian market. It was super difficult to raise money. 
15 years ago. Uh, we also, uh, we are very profitable and we also invest massively in innovation, massively. So uh, this is an example uh, of our, our story since 2002. We were the first SMS company. We sent the first SMS uh, uh, alert or SMS with content in Latin America. We sent the first ringtone in Latin America. All these are technologies to very simple phones. And then we launched the first M multimedia message product in Latin America, the first 3G video portal in Latin America. You see, when, when, I, when, I, when we made research about our competitors here in the US, uh, to the camera is terrible because I walk all the time, I'm sorry. <laughs> I try to control myself. <laughs> When, we, when I made research about, about companies here in the US, uh, there was no company that was driving through all these technologies. We found the comp uh, 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 competitors that they were an SMS company, or they were a ringtone company, or they were a WAP company, or they were a video company. But there was no competitor that was crazy to in, to create all these projects and invest in all these technologies at the same time. But we did. And this is the reason why we survived. I'm not sure if you read the last to long, long no, long to last, what is the, the Christus, no, the... Good to last. Good to last. Uh, book that the secret of the, 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 the innovative companies is the culture uh, and, 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 and investing in innovation is not, it's not the product. The product it has a cycle that uh, was born, grow, and will die. So this, our secret is, okay, we have a crazy no innovative culture that we reinvent the products all the time. And the end of the story was in 2011, we won the first hackathon that Facebook promoted here in Silicon Valley for mobile. We were competing against eBay, TripAdvisor, Eventbrite, some gaming companies, I think Zynga was there, and we won the hackathon here. And then we thought, hey, why don't we open an operation in Silicon Valley and compete against the, the American companies? And we did it. And then I arrived here in 2012 when I made the first talk here in Monterey. And, and the dream was come here and launch a product or launch technologies here in, Silicon, in, in, in the US to compete against US companies. Question, if I tell you, guys, let's open, a, I'm coming from Brazil, okay? And let's open together a company that we will beat Disney in mobile. We will make more money than Disney does. Here in the US, who is American here? <laughs> What did you say to me? I've never heard of Disney. No, never heard. But Disney, you heard. Sure. Do you think Disney has some apps and has, has potential to launch apps for kids? Sure. But do you think a Brazilian company could beat Disney here in the US and mobile? Why not? Good question. We launched an app called Play, a good, good point. We launched an app called Play Kids. And I'll tell you the rest of the story. Uh, Play Kids, uh, it's a kind of a Netflix for kids. We are focused on kids under five. We have more than 10 games in a, in a, this is the interface, okay? If you download Play Kids in your iPad or iPhone, you'll find this. It's not a menu, it's a, it's a kind of a, the interface is magic, it's magical. We have some games, we have around the world more than 168 series, more than 1,200 episodes. We have books, we have lullabies to help kids to sleep, we have some Easter eggs. This app beat Disney. This app beat more than 200 apps combined from Disney. We are the, the, the top grossing app in the world for kids. By the way, we, we bet we, we, we won against Nickelodeon globally. Nickelodeon has more than 100 apps. Only with Play Kids, we make more money than Nickelodeon globally. And we will beat Disney. Disney is in front of us uh, some, some 
some US dollars, but we will, we will beat them. Um, if you isolate app, apps individually, we, we, we beat all, them, all of them. This number two is a, a Japanese app. Disney is the number four with Club Penguin. They have other apps that are the number five or six, but we, 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 we pass them. And we are leaders not only in the US, but globally in all these red, countries in red, we are the number one app for kids. Uh, we are launching in December 11th in China. My prediction is that we'll be the number one in China. Have you ever seen a company from West winning in China? Only Apple. Apple is the, is the leader in the, the super high-end phones in China, but only Apple won in China. I'm saying that we will win in China in our segment. I don't know, maybe six months I'll be back and you listen to this story. Uh, so this is what we, we did uh, globally in the next, in the last uh, one year. Uh, about raising money, we consider that PR is super important to raise money. We were planning to raise money in Silicon Valley, and I invested a lot of resources and, 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 and money uh, working with a PR agency to create an awareness about us in, in, in the press here in Silicon Valley. So uh, TechCrunch covered us many times, the next web, uh, GigaOn, all things D. So this helps uh, uh, to pass a message that, that you are a, a hot company. So this is important. The marketing before raising money, I consider this important. And how did we grow 100 times six months ago was 40 times, Ellie. <laughs> so how we grew uh, 100 times since Nasper is invested? Uh, we ran a, a very aggressive M&A strategy and, and we raised money many times during this process. So I'll tell this story and I'll tell some, some stories about how we did the, the, the raising money and what we did with the money. Uh, the, the, the first point is uh, our plans were always insanely big. So when you talk with an investor, you have to be very aggressive and address a very huge market. Don't think small. Think small costs you the same as thinking big. So think big. Okay? And we are... I'm not sure if you know, do you know this company AB InBev? Do you know a company called Budweiser? Oh, you're drinking a lot of beer, young guys. <laughs> so AB InBev is the, the holding of Budweiser. This company start, started in Brazil. The controllers, of the, 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 the main shareholders of this company started from Brazil. Uh, there is a, a Brazilian entrepreneur called it Jorge Paulo Leman. Maybe you've heard about the Lehman Foundation that invests a lot in education around the globe. Lehman started in Brazil and he, found, uh, uh, he acquired, he was a banker, he acquired a brewing company in Brazil called Brahma. Uh, and then he started merging and acquiring their competitors uh, and they dominate the Brazilian market and then they merge with the, 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 the first European brewing company call it Interbrew, and they became InBev, and then they, they had this psychotic, crazy plan to acquire Budweiser in the US, what was almost impossible, and then they acquired, and they became the first, the number one brewing company in the world. And not happy, he acquired Burger King, he acquired Heinz, and there are some rumors that he will acquire Coca-Cola. So this is, the, this is our benchmark. We are following this, we are inspired by these guys since the beginning. So I'll tell you our story and you see there's some similarities and raising money all the time during this process. Uh, and back to 2005, uh, there were some angels, you know what is an angel in the raising money process. Uh, there are investors that are friends or 
or families that invest in companies. There were some angels in the Brazilian market, and there were some companies in the Brazilian market. Can you see the, 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 the name of the companies? No, this, is the re this was the reality of the Brazilian market. The companies were too small, so small that nobody could s see them in the market. So uh, these five companies was the, 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 the beginning of, the, of Movili. So five independent companies in the Brazilian market, very small companies. Uh, and each of, uh, of us, we, we raised some, some money from angels at that time. And some of us, we made a kind of a series A that was a bigger investor comparing to the angels. The series A, they can put, depend, $1 million, $1 to $5 million, sometimes a little more. In the Brazilian market, it's a little, a, a little smaller, the checks. So after that, we were planning to, to build the, the, the largest Brazilian company in our segment. So what we did, two of the small companies decided to merge. And they merged, 50-50. And they became a little bigger. Now, can you see the logos now? Compara and End Time. So when they merged, they became bigger. The, the, the company became Compara End Time. They merged the name. What is terrible? The brand is terrible. And then we call the attention from Naspers. Is there anybody from China here? Nobody from China. Do you guys know a company called Tencent? Do you know a company called Facebook? <laughs> Tencent is as big as Facebook. It's the largest uh, internet company in China. So you have to study more. Please study ten cents. Their goal was to make ten cents of dollar from each Chinese people, each Chinese person. Their valuation is more or less one hundred and fifty billion dollars. So pay attention in these companies. They have a lot to, to teach us. This company called Naspers is the largest. Uh, media company in Africa. They invested in Tencent when Tencent was a startup. They put $30 million to have 45% of the company. $30 million to have 45% of the company. Today they own 32% of the company. Was a good investment? Yes? This was one of the best investments ever in the, the venture capital and, 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 and investment market. Probably this is, this is close from Peter Thiel and Facebook. That was one of the, the great investments ever. So Naspers is a South African company. They, they invested in us. They made a Series B in this company here after the merge. And uh, uh, the intention was good. Uh, this company here, Compera, has some con had con some connect connectivities and uh, uh, business with two carriers in Brazil, and Time had other businesses, other products with other carriers in Brazil, and combined the, the, uh, the portfolio made, made sense and the business synergies made sense. Uh, but when you merge two companies, there is a big cultural problem and political problem. So the CEO start fighting against the COO that was the former other CEO. So they start fighting. And they start burning money like crazy. Like a super cool Silicon Valley startup that raised $20 million. That start burning money like crazy. What happened, the company almost broke down, bankrupt. Uh, they acquired my company. It was a kind of a we hire. And after they acquired my company, we faced the 2007 crisis. Sequoia Capital at that time sent an, a, a very famous PDF to all companies saying, we are under crisis, don't burn money. If you, if you think that a layoff is necessary, do the layoff and focus. So what we did, we did a 35% of layoff of the company. So we, we fired a lot of friends and we fired four shareholders, four founders were fired here of that 
that original companies. So to, to give a good, good news to the investors and treat the company like a very serious thing, we had to fire founders. And it was the best thing for everybody. It was the best thing for the company. It was the best, best thing for the executives that were, were there in the company because they felt that it was super serious. And at the end of the story, five, six, seven years later, it was very good for the founders that were fired. They became millionaires because it was the best decision for the company. We merged with another company, another competitor called Yavox. We brought many marketing skills, but we had other fights against the CTO and the VP of engineering, and we made another 20% layoff. If you want to understand well how is the CEO and the management team problems, Ben Ohoritz from Anderson Ohoritz Venture Capital launched a book called The Hard Thing of the hard things, something like this, is brilliant. He, he speaks a lot about the problems and how you, you face crisis and, and, and uh, uh, how he, he managed the company in, in very difficult periods. And then, we, after this, we were very mature. And then we call other investors uh, saying, we are the number one in Brazil after this merge here. And we want to make the next step. So we want to go to Latin America. We want to acquire a company in Latin America to become the largest company in Latin America. And our own, our, the same investors believe in our plan. And we raise a Series C here. And then we acquired a company in, in Latin America called Psychologic. To expand to LATAM, we made a layoff in Latin America, and we faced huge cultural challenges, but we invade Latin America with our result-driven culture, and, and, and we became the number one company in Latin America. Um, and then the next step was, OK, how you, how you keep growing? Uh, at this point, we decided to do two things. We decided to keep investing in internal innovation, internal new products. And we also start making strategic investments in other startups, in, in technologies that we, we didn't have any know-how. We did the first investment, it was a Series A in a, in a company called iFood. iFood, do you know Grubhub? here in the US, iFood is the grub hub of Brazil. When we invested on them, uh, we put not only money, but we put all our marketing skills, product mentoring. Uh, we had investment capacity to help them to grow. Uh, we passed the, to them the, the M&A know-how, so the aggressivity in acquiring companies, investing in companies, and, 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 and dominating the market very fast, uh, and the management that we have in, the, in, in, in our culture. When we invested in them, they, they had the platform ready. They were making 7% of their orders uh, using mobile devices, mobile apps. After one year and a half, they are making 70% of all orders using their mobile devices. And they grew 10 times. And they made 10 acquisitions. And they became 20 times bigger than the number two. So iFood today is the grub hub of Brazil, 20 times bigger than the second player. Um, And then we, we, we thought, OK, we are very good now as a strategic investors. Let's keep running this strategy. And then we found a gaming company that I'm not disclosing the name. They were very good in ASO, application search optimization. Uh, and they were very good in monetizing 
uh, the apps using advertising. Mobile is very good in monetizing selling content and selling subscriptions. Good, the kind of uh, 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 investment that we are good to, 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 to help. And this company was very early stage. So we enter with a lot of, with many ideas and opinions and we almost kill the company. Okay, in the iFood case, the product was ready. They just need power to grow. So that's why it worked very well. And it's interesting when you raise money, you have to find the right investor. Is Movely a bad investor because we failed here? Probably no. But probably Movely has some skills that helps some startups in, in a certain phase. An investor is, investment is a, is a kind of a wedding or marry, married, oh, what is the name, Ellie? It's a, it's a kind of a wedding, but wedding is the party, right? Marriage. It's a marriage, yeah. So will you marry with somebody that you don't like or you don't trust? No. So you have to be confident that that is the right partner. Uh, so what's the next step? So we, we're doing well with iFood, we, we're still investing in, inside the company to, to create new things. We, we created PlayKids, that is a global leader, so both strategies was running well. So what's the next step? So let's raise more money. And our CEO said, it's in Silicon Valley that entrepreneurs create global tech business. So, as Ellie said, let's try to raise money in Silicon Valley. We are a great Latin American company, growing very fast. Let's go there, it will be easy. By the way, in Silicon Valley, there's a lot of money available. So what do you think ha it happens in, when Movely start pitching in Silicon Valley? Smile or cry? What happened in your opinion? Great story, profitable, growing like crazy, great numbers, monthly active users, active users growing a lot, many products, what happened? Cry? Why? If you say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Yeah. Ellie said before that we failed here in raising money. Ah, really? Choose to do it. Yeah, we we failed. They said we have no focus. So there are some mature markets where the venture capitals they have the guideline. So they invest in this kind of company. For example, companies that has founders and has focus. So the, the, the usual Silicon Valley company solves one problem with one product. So YouTube solves one, product, one problem. Facebook just focusing on a social network. Of course, bigger companies after some, some time, like Google or Apple, they have other business units, especially Google is a good example, that they invest in other areas. But they, the, the typical Silicon Valley uh, startup solves one pro problem with very, very, very focus. And they said, no, you have no focus. You have 30, uh, 20 products, you have three business units, super complex. You are focusing on feature phones. You are promising that Play Kids will be a super pop star, uh, blockbuster, but we don't believe in you. And I said, okay, we don't care. We are super profitable. Let's find somebody else that believe in our product, in our, in our strategy, in our company. So our CEO split the company in three business units. The first business unit is the cash call, the feature phone business in partnership with mobile carriers in Latin America. 
The second business unit was Play Kids, that was in the beginning, was super early stage. We were leaders in Brazil and launching in, in the US. So the plan was to become the global leader in mobile, competing against Disney, maybe Netflix. And the third business unit was iFood. So iFood is one player, like Grubhub, but the plan here is to launch many, many apps or invest in many, many startups that people can make something, make an order in, in, your, in your mobile, and have the, 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 the consequences in real life. I order a food in my mobile, and the food arrives in, in my house. I order a cab, and the taxi arrives in my house. I, I order for a courier to pick up some documents, and the guy arrived here with a moto or a, a car and pick up the document and, and deliver the document in other, another place. So this was our plan. Are we a focused company? You can be sincere. Not yet. We are? Not yet. No, not yet. We are a big mess here. Three completely different businesses with different technologies and different know-hows. So this kind of mess here, this kind of company, is a mess for a Silicon Valley investor. But this kind of company to other investors maybe is a good, a good company. So we raised 55 million after receiving our no from Silicon Valley from two investors. One is Jorge Paulo Lemon from InBev, and the other is the Brazilian government. The Brazilian government gave us some money to invest in the company. This is TechCrunch talking about our 55 million. Now we have great mentors. Do you think Jorge Paulo Lema is a good, a good mentor to us? He made a great global success story, right? So we are very happy to have him and his team. Uh, now the new board member of Movili is, the, is a board member of Mercado Livre. That is the largest internet company in Latin America. It's a kind of a eBay in Latin America. So we have now board members and mentors, world class. And what we did, so we received this Series D here. The story was, we will dominate the world. Um, and with this, we, we are using this money to take off Play Kids. So I show you what, what happened with Play Kids. So part of this money and our on profits, we invested and created Play Kids. We acquired the Yelp of Brazil. This company is called Apontadores, the same as Yelp in Brazil. So they, they have the reviews of, of uh, uh, stores, uh, and they have a very good location and maps operation, like Google Maps. They, they have a kind of a Google Maps. And we, 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 we keep investing in startups. So we invested in Super Player, that is the Spotify of Brazil. And we invest in Cine Papaya, that is the kind of a ticket master of Brazil. You can ask for a ticket in your mobile, and the ticket arrives in your cell phone or in, in, in your house. So we are investing in new verticals to keep growing. We have food. We are planning to invest in taxes. We have ticketing, we have music, and we have the base of, of locations and reviews from Apontador. So we will be the kind of Alibaba of Latin America. So this is the big mess. We have content here. With, we have some sports apps, we have Super Player, that is the Spotify, we have Play Kids, that is the global leader on kids. We have the M Commerce operation with tickets. This is a courier delivery company, Apontador, that is the, the Yelp of Brazil. Chef Time is like Manchery here. I'm not sure if you know Manchery, but you order food 
and they deliver a, a kit, a pack, with food that you can cook by yourself at home. iFood, they deliver the food ready, ready to, to, to eat. And the taxi that we are planning to invest. We have the carrier business here, and the map link is the apontador uh, part that is like Google Maps. So this is the company today. I cannot talk about valuation. You also have Movil uh, Payments? Movil Payments is, we have connectivity with carriers. <coughs> when a game developer wants to sell coins in their game, the user clicks there and says, I want to buy 10 coins on Farmville or other game, I don't know. One option is to pay using credit cards. But 30% of the Brazilian population has credit cards. I think it's less, less than 30%. So how you sell this kind of virtual goods to the whole Brazilian population? Using the carrier billing. So you charge user on their cell phone bill and sell the, the coins to game developer to, to game game users. So this is Movili Payment. It's a platform to sell virtual goods most more focused in games. Thank you very much. Facebook Facebook uses this platform to sell coins, virtual coins in, in Latin America. And we don't know what we we I'd like to expand this to to credit cards, but it's a it's a different, we, we, we need more focus. So the mess is too big now. But you know the huge value in payment place. Yeah, but the point, Ellie, in Brazil, banks are extremely good in technology. So I don't believe in a startup in Brazil that will, will attack the, the payment, the end banking or end payments area. So. We are, we are with these payments where we are good in partnership with carriers. I don't know what will happen in the banking and credit cards. So our growth uh, strategy was we, we play war. Uh, we started in Brazil first, and then we made the, the next step to Latin America, and then the next, next step to US. And from US, we are growing globally. Um, uh, so this is my advice if you, if you work in a startup, don't try to dominate the world from the day one. So become the number one, Uber became the number one in San Francisco, and then they, they start expanding to other cities or, or, or regions. Uh, how we face innovation, we make tons of mistakes, but Nothing will stop us to keep it creating big plans and, and crazy, crazy uh, 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 strategies to, to grow fast. And that's it. So if you have any, any questions about this story or about the, the phases of raising money, how we deal with venture capitals, I'm, I'm open to to answer. Sure. Uh, could you talk a little bit more about um, maybe some of the uh, advice that uh, Lemon, the, the, the investor Lemon, this guy, um, some, of the, some of the stuff that uh, he's worked with you guys on specifically, and then um, maybe some like lessons that you've learned from him. Think big. Invest in, in education for your executives. He is very well known to send the best talents to Stanford or Harvard. He pays their MBAs, mm -hmm. and and then the, the guys come back with great energy. Meritocracy. So we are super aggressive in in giving stock options and more equity to the main the main talents, and you have to build an internal model that that. You, you evaluate the, 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 the performance of each, each manager and the, basically use the Jack Welch uh, model that you have the, 
the ABC curve, 10% receives a, a, a C rate, and or you recover these guys or you, you fire these guys. The B guys are the guys that runs the operation and are super important. And you have the 30% on the top that deserves a, a, a bigger challenge and deserves a, a, a better salary, stock options, and a, a much bigger challenge. What else Lehman usually says? Yeah, think big, invest in meritocracy, and, 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 and invest it to form great, great talents, great executives. What about like specifically when he's looking into a company, like into their, into their operations? Does he talk anything about like his analytical process? When wants to to buy, yeah, company that are not well managed, mm. underperforming, and with with your skills, if you buy the company, you can restructure the company to take off. Another thing is synergies. So. If, if this company has something that you make your company or your holding run faster, it's important as well. So usually they buy companies that are underperforming in terms of management. I'll tell you a story. When they acquired Budweiser, the new CEO arrived in the headquarters. I don't know where it was Budweiser. Each director had three secretaries, one room, this size, and the CEO works in a very simple table with everybody. The first order said, broke all the walls, sell all jets, all, all airplanes of the company, and let's restructure everything. So, kill costs, they are very tough with costs, and let's work what, what makes sense, what, what matters. A room like this, this size for an executive is, is bullshit. It makes no sense at all. If you go to Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg sits in a table in the middle of the developers. So it's a simple table. He has a meeting room, but sell all airplanes. I, I love this. Break the walls. And they broke the walls. They broke the office. What else? Other question? <laughs> yeah, so there's, unless someone else has something. Uh, could, you, could you speak a little bit more about um, the experience when you went to Silicon Valley and actually were like uh, uh, pitching uh, your, your business or your model? Um, and then like what, what that exchange was like back and forth with, with investors? Uh, like were you nervous going in? Did you like have your pitch already uh, like... Um, like smoothed out, and then like, how did you deal with like the the kind of cold reaction that you got um, from the initially? Every pitch is a chance to learn. I remember very well um, we were learning a lot every time we talk with a VC. It is important not only to speak but to listen. Mm. So I was talking with Ali uh, about this. Um, uh, we 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 had our plan. And yeah, we had some cold reactions and, and we tried, I remember we trying to figure out what they were thinking and, and what could they, they teach us. And, and it, it, it's a frustrating process most of the time, but it's, if you have the humility, 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 humility to learn, and accept the feedbacks, probably you'll be a much more mature entrepreneur after each section. Mm -hmm. So this was the most remarkable thing. And, and you have to learn what, what are their process, what, what are their guidelines. You have to take care sometimes because th some firms are, are big and, and sometimes in the same firm there are people that works on seed money, there are people that works in growth money, and the strategy is totally different, and sometimes you, have a, you can have a good fit with one, but if you talk with the other guy, they will say, no, 
this is not in my guideline, so you are out. So you have to study the, the firm yeah. and talk with the right person. This was some mistakes we made. So in some, some VCs, we talked with the wrong person. Mm -hmm. And they said, no, you, we don't like you. There were some companies that didn't receive us. By the way, I'll meet them this week, and I'll show the results after two <laughs> years. <laughs> yeah, it is good to have a revenge. Yeah. Just to show, yeah, we can. Do you, do you use some of that fuel uh, as like uh, inspiration for, for like working extra hard? So once you can like rub it in their face later on, you're like, no, no, no. Sometimes it's funny yeah. to learn, uh -huh. but no, we have our own energy to grow like crazy. So the culture of the companies, nobody will stop us, and we will keep m making mistakes and learn and learn and learn, and then we will will find a, a solution. Yeah. But it's not a personal revenge. Sometimes it's funny, but just for fun. I don't gain, I don't gain anything on this. Just a personal satisfaction, what means nothing. So another question? No, th let's move to the other corner. Um, on, on growing in these other markets in China and in the United States, are you kind of aware of seeing any Challenge, you know, competitors in Latin America that are growing quickly and could become competition. In that We're going to China with Play Kids. So your question is, is your question specific about Play Kids? No, no, my question is about, you know, obviously you've built a very strong core business in Latin America, but while you're going to other countries to, to, to gain market share there and to grow, are, there, are you aware of um, competitors in Latin America that are also growing and trying to in competition we have some competitors in Latin America in, in isolated in, in one of that business areas. So in the carrier business, there are some competitors there. In, in the online to offline, that is the iFood business, we are 20 times bigger than our competitor. So the challenge on iFood is to leave Brazil and expand to Latin America. On Play Kids, it's a different game. Imagine there is a different company. By the way, we are thinking in spinning off Play Kids, for example. So the challenge on Play Kids, we are the number one in the App Store. Who is our competitor? YouTube and Netflix. Believe me or not, but we are. I wake up every day trying to compete against YouTube and Netflix. And sometimes YouTube is a friend, so we cooperate, but it's a gray relationship but why am I going to China because I need to dominate the world faster than my competitor in a new platform where he's not good for example Netflix is not good at all in mobile especially for kids for kids I, 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 I don't even mention how better is our app to kids than Netflix so I have to run I compete against time I have a window opportunity to become the next Nickelodeon, focus on mobile. So I compete against time. So that's why I'm going to China. By the way, talking about valuations and raising money, Play Kids probably will be a spin off. I am the number one in the world. If I enter in China and become the number one in the world, in China, and I never seen a, a company from West in the app market entering China and becoming the number one. In my opinion, the valuations double. Makes sense. So I gain force. And by the way, I think if I become the number one in China in my segment, I can be a good acquisition for a Chinese company to leave China. Imagine Tencent or Alibaba investing in, a, in the kids' market. I would be, would be the best target because I am the leader in China and I'm the leader outside China as well. So the challenge is insane. If you ask me, are you confident? Are you afraid? Of course I am. Will you make mistakes? Of course I will. But I promise that I'll keep trying until I find an answer. 
I expect in six months I'll tell you a good story about China and tell you big mistakes we made about China. <laughs> By the way, I think we are, we are doing well in the, the launch of China. I hired a Chinese uh, a person in Silicon Valley with Wharton MBA. We, plan, we are planning China much better than what we planned other countries. So, but I think China is much more difficult. So what kind of lessons have you looked at other, company, other Western companies that have gone and failed? And how are you trying to do it differently than looking at the lessons from them and trying to take a different strategy, a different approach? It's a good question. I did a study a lot, being honest, I didn't study a lot the, the, the failing cases. More in general, basic, basic things like, of course, you have to respect the local culture. Uh, eBay made many mistakes not understanding the local Chinese users. eBay entered, eBay, I think 10 years ago, had 80, 83, 85% of the, the B2C market in China, and they lose for Alibaba. Alibaba launched Taobao, that kills eBay. The main lesson, there is a, a Harvard business case, uh, case study about, about this story. Uh, they didn't understand what the, the Chinese culture needs and what the Chinese users needs want and want. What we are doing, we're, we're licensing local content local Chinese cartoons from local big content providers. And also some international cartoons to offer to Chinese users that wants to learn English. It is another opportunity in China, very strong opportunity. Uh, Apple is supporting us a lot to understand China well, so we are very close from Apple because we are the number one app for kids at the App Store, so I ask it for advices from Apple before going to China. So I'm trying to learn from partners before launch. At the end of the day, our methodology is launch quick. We decided to launch in China one month ago, and I'm launching December 11th. Launch, find the problems and solve the problems. Fast. Fast, run fast, run fast. Iterate, iterate and, and fix, fix and launch, fix and launch, fix and... So I don't, I don't believe in many, many, pre six months of studying how I will enter in China. No, I don't believe this. Let's launch, launch, fix, 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 and then you find the, the path. It's a little polemic, my answer, but this is how we do things. <laughs> What else? Um, what's your uh, what, what's the your team like? Like your your closest uh, advisors or executive team? And I know you, it's, it's kind of shuffled over over time. You said like five or six of those founders were released early on, and all this kind of stuff. Um, so, uh, what what like what's like the, the closest unit that you trust that you work with? Uh, and I'm sure people have been brought on by like Lemon and stuff like this and. Uh, I don't know, uh, maybe just speak to like, the importance of like, that core team. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have the C-level team, the CEO and the, and the CEOs of that business unit, the CFO. It's a group of five guys, six guys. And below these guys, we have the management team that is a group of 30 people. This is the, this is the heart of the company. And each one of these guys, they have goals that we, we plan in the strategic planning, the balance scorecard of the company. So each manager and each C-level guy, they have specific goals for the year. And we are, we are doing this for six years, so I think this is super important to, 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 to promote the meritocracy and to measure the results of the management team. So the managers that overachieve, they will be promoted, they will gain a, 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 higher, a higher challenge, a bigger challenge. The manager that didn't 
didn't succeed, they will be reallocated or they will have a, 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 another mission to try to, to, to bring better results. Um, once a year, we have one big meeting of one week with the whole management team to establish the goals. The meeting will be in March because our fiscal year starts in April. And then we set up the, all the goals for the whole company, for each business unit, in each project, in each business unit. Yeah, and these guys, they are very, they, they are very solid, it's a very solid team. Uh, it's, it's not easy to hire somebody and put this in this team. Usually this team is, is made by people from the company that grew from the company, the talents that usually start uh, at the bottom and, and grow to, to this, this management team. Sometimes we hire, but it usually comes from the company. Because the culture of results is super important. It's unacceptable to not reach the goals. Every month, this team has a meeting of five hours, six hours in a video conferencing, where each manager explains what's, what's happening with the project and what is the plan to, to reach the results. And everybody can cooperate and so this methodology came from the uh, InBev uh, 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 methodology that is very famous. Uh, it's part of our success. I really believe it makes totally different to, to us. Commitment with the goals and reaching the goals and the... Anything else? Plaquiz like is doing very well in other countries besides Brazil, including the US. We passed Disney, we passed Nickelodeon. Why I'm confident about China? Because it, in my opinion, it's a virgin market. It's an underserved market on kids under five, especially in an iOS platform. There are 100 million iOS users in China. We made a, a, a study about our competitors, potential competitors in China. The apps are terrible. The content there is not brilliant. The interface and the magic in the app is not so good. So that's why we are confident. Will I make mistakes? Of course I will. Will I, will I fix this? Yes, we will. And we find the opportunity. So basically it's a market that is, is open. It's new, it's underserved, just a few companies focusing in, on this market, and it's a huge opportunity, in my opinion. I say, obviously, since you're sp spreading out to these other countries, I'm guessing mostly with the Play Kids app, how um, massive or how, what do you look for for your localization force for these different countries? Say for China, you said you had a Chinese employee. Do you just have one? Do you go out more and do more surveys? What sort of localization do you do? I'll tell two funny stories about localization, okay? Following my crazy strategy. <laughs> I'll tell you first this, a, a feature phone st story about localization. When we acquired Psychologic and we took over Latin America, as Brazilians that didn't know Latin America, by the way, Latin America is not one region. We have more than 20 countries with different cultures. Who is from Latin America here? Nobody? Different culture, everybody speaks Spanish, Brazil speaks Portuguese, but the Spanish is different country by country. When we acquired, we had the brilliant idea, hey, let's concentrate all the content uh, uh, acquisition and the content generation in Venezuela. I, thought, I, I told this story here before. In Venezuela, why? In Venezuela, we cannot take out the money from the country. So let's put more teams there to provide content to all Latin America. Two or three months later, the Mexican guys, the country manager from Mexico started calling us. Hey, the content they are producing is shit. It's terrible. 
Why, Davi? Que, que passa? What's happening with the content? They just send us content about baseball. The sports content is only about baseball. And here we like soccer. We like other... We like uh, lucha. And they just send us good content from baseball. And then we start, we start seeing that, okay, we want to unify the product or the content operation for a whole region uh, without understanding the local markets is a mistake. What we did, we split the content operations in each country. So each con 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 country now has a content uh, team. Another funny story about localization on Play Kids. We were launching in Germany and UK and France and Spain at the same time. At that time, we just had Portuguese, Spanish, and English. So we had the challenge to translate in Germany, German, and French. And our product team in Brazil, I said, hey, we have to launch next, next month. Go ahead and solve this. What they did, they hired these online translation services, and they guy, the guy chose Translate to Dutch, if I'm not wrong. But it was Deutsch. <laughs> <laughs> so we launched in Germany and France and UK and other countries, and then downloads start growing, and we saw German, uh, Germany flat, no, no downloads. <laughs> so what's happening? And then we start calling, oh, does anybody know somebody that lives in Germany to test the, the, the downloads and see if it's what's wrong? Let's see if there's a bug at Apple. And then one of the, the users, friend of us that tested said, people don't understand this, maybe in Holland this will take off, but not here in German. You have to translate to, to German. So. The problem. What we are doing in China now, this person is leading the localization. That is it's more challenging than, than in, in Germany. So it's super difficult. I don't know, I, I'm more confident that we will not make these basic mistakes. But some, some mistakes will happen and in six months I'll tell you the funny stories. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eli. Thank you.